Hey, it's Lenny McGill with the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop here in San Diego, California. And today we're upstairs in our training room. And this is where we do our concealed carry uh, classes, our, uh, our Glock armorers classes, uh, and any of the other uh, classroom uh, teaching for self-defense shooting that we do here in this facility. If you are ever taking a class, I invite you to come up here and, and train with us. Today, we're gonna talk about the combat grip also known as the tactical grip or, or practical grip or, or a combat uh, shooting competition grip. Uh, it's different than a regular shooting grip and it really makes a difference and I guarantee that in the next 15 to 20 minutes anybody watching this if you incorporate these techniques and uh, understand the techniques you will become a faster and more accurate shooter and like I said I guarantee that because this is the skill that is the difference between good and great, all right? Now first, let's do a definition of a, a combat grip versus say a, a standard grip. You know, a standard grip in your shooting, uh, plinking, uh, just uh, going ahead and having fun, and even bullseye. Let's talk about bullseye for a second, bullseye competition. Years ago, I did a bullseye competition uh, at the NRA, the NRA bullseye shooting, and it was basically a one-handed, grip, guys would put their hand on their side, they breathe, they bring the gun up and take their time and aim and aim and aim and squeeze and squeeze and aim and they're trying to keep that sight picture right there and aim and aim and aim and then bang, there's the shot. Takes a while to get there, one shot, boop, the gun goes up, they're relaxing, they're relaxing kind of their their body a little bit, keeping it still, trying to be relaxed because they don't want to disturb the sight picture as they pull the trigger. It makes a lot of sense. They're looking for tight, tight, tight groups at 25 yards, even 50 yards, 10 yards, to literally be um, all the shots in the 10 ring, which is a tiny little circle, all right? Combat shooting, tactical shooting, practical shooting is different than bullseye or plinking. Because we want to place multiple shots onto the target as fast as we can, and then be able to engage additional targets as fast as we can, while maintaining a solid grip on the gun and control of the gun so that we can go from target to target to target as fast as possible and be accurate. So the grip for regular plinking and shooting and, and you know, kind of just having fun and, and true like bullseye accuracy is totally different than this combat grip, this tactical, practical competition grip that we're gonna talk about right here. And like I said, if you watch this and you really understand this and you apply these principles, you're gonna be a faster, more accurate shooter. Now here's how it works. This, of course, is a Glock 19. This is my trainer Glock 19. It is different because it has our reset trigger in it with our laser module. I use it all the time to dry fire. It's really the best dry fire practice tool uh, ever invented, to be honest, because it allows you to do multiple shots, and every time you pull the trigger, it puts a laser out. It's really phenomenal, because it gives you the time to get the trigger time, the ability to get the trigger time that you're looking for in your house, all right? And it's a real gun with a real trigger pull. So there are some other guns out there that don't quite have the same trigger pull, and it's not quite a real Glock. Close, but not quite. This is a real Glock that we install this on. It has all the stuff. You can take the trigger in and out. I've dedicated this gun to be my trainer gun because I use it all the time. I mean, every other day I'm dry firing. And um, so I'm gonna train with this, and then we'll also talk about my um, uh, standard uh, Carry 19, which is this one right here. And of course it's empty. This one features our pyramid trigger, uh, the uh, competition, or excuse me, the uh, concealed carry magwell. Uh, we've done a grip job on this. You'll see how I've done our grip job to uh, give us uh, uh, the Glock knuckle, the trigger, the, the trigger finger undercut, as well as the um, enhanced grip. So we went ahead and did all that stuff to smooth it out and make it more comfortable. It's got our, uh, this is our Viper cut, and it's got our neat, neat uh, HD sights on it. So a lot of cool stuff on this gun. 
this is the gun I actually shoot, and this is the gun I train with. So let's get back to this guy. And we're going to uh, uh, really focus on this grip. When I see people at the show, you know, we go to these gun shows, and uh, a lot of guys come up, and some people are brand new, and they really have never shot a gun or handled a gun much in their life at all. And typically, they'll pick, they'll pick it up, and they do two things. One, they don't check to see it's unloaded, which is, you know, I mean, that's a learned skill. So whenever you go to a, uh, a shooting match and people who are used to handling firearms and you hand someone a firearm, the first thing you want to do, the polite thing you want to do is to check to see that the gun is unloaded. Yep, unloaded, boom, pull the trigger in a safe direction. If you hand the gun directly back to me after you've handled it, even if it's for 10 seconds, even if I'm standing right there with you, I'm going to go ahead and get the gun, check and see it's unloaded. All right, we all know the gun's unloaded, but when it's in my control, I want to make sure it's unloaded. So you should keep that in mind whenever you handle a firearm and whenever you pick one up, you need to know what the status of that gun is. Keep your finger off the trigger because most new shooters will grab the gun basically here and put their, trigger, their finger on the trigger. That's basically what I see every time because that's what they do. They don't know if the gun's loaded or not. That's just where they go. We want to train ourselves to keep our finger straight up. That's kind of the safety issue. And that's how you always recognize someone who understands firearms, who's been around firearms. Keep that finger straight like so. All right. Now, back to the combat grip. Like I said, a lot of people grab the gun down here. They actually start down low. And you see the, uh, the air space here or the room left over between uh, the beaver tail of the grip and my hand? Well, that uh, is going to induce muzzle flip because as the slide cycles, You've got the mass of the slide coming back, and because you're down here, it has more leverage on it to kick itself up. I'm suggesting and telling you that the best grip you want is high, as high as possible on that grip, beaver tail type concept right there, that little swoop right there, get up as high as possible. So it's really important you understand that the higher you are, the more control you'll have over the firearm. Now get this, here's one thing very interesting. The nine millimeter round doesn't really have much recoil. The recoil is induced by the action of the slide. The weight of the slide coming back is what does most of the recoil. So if I shot, and I do shoot, a carbine with nine millimeter, there's hardly any recoil. It's almost like a 22 because there's no reciprocating slide. But with the handgun, because it's in your hand, a lot of the recoil and muzzle flip in particular are induced because the slide is coming back so fast and going forward so fast. And even though the slide is only about a pound and a half to two pounds, depending upon the configuration, that alone in that motion will flip the frame up a little bit and make it hard to hold on to. So the higher up on the grip you are, the better you are. So step one, high. Step two, always keep that finger straight, okay? We wrap our fingers around. Now this is very important to understand how much you want to do it. Now everybody's hands are different. And people are gonna say, well, you have to do it this way. Well, it depends on your hands, what's comfortable, what works. I'm gonna tell you what works for me. Whatever works for you, is gonna be okay, but I, I, there's a couple techniques you almost have to use. First thing on the right hand here, because I'm right-handed, now if you're left-handed, you apply it to your left hand, is I wanna wrap my hand up, I wanna get myself in the middle of my thumb and index finger, into that webbing there, and I wanna use my, the butt of my palm, almost like a palm strike in martial arts, okay? I wanna put that butt right on the spine of the grip, boom. Boom, get my hand fit in there, and that's it. So now, I'm basically palm striking the gun. All right, so there I am. There's the grip. Fingers are wrapped around, kind of as far as possible. Some people with longer hands may have to pull their fingers back a little bit so they keep a pan part of this panel open, and I'm gonna show you why. But right now, my hand fits perfectly right there. Right. Okay, now you'll notice this is my trainer gun, does not have the Glock knuckle undercut, whereas my real gun does have the knuckle undercut, so I can actually get this hand up even higher 
that's what the purpose of that is, is so that I get it up higher. So not only does it look cool, and it does prevent the, uh, the callus that you get on this knuckle when you shoot a lot, but it also allows me to control the gun better. So these are not only, like I said, cosmetic, they are truly functional because the higher up I am, the more control I have that reciprocating slide. All right, so here we are. Palm strike onto the back of that gun, right? Now, many people make this mistake, is they put a death grip on the gun with the right hand. Oh, I'm gonna hold that gun, I'm gonna just, you know, I got it, yeah. For combat shooting and for self-defense shooting and for any shooting you wanna do with multiple shots and target to target, the secret to a grip is the left hand, okay, or the off hand. I'm right-handed, so it's my left hand. Your left hand is your right hand. Because what we want to do with this right hand is we want to grip it with about 60% of our musculature. We don't want to put a death grip on it. And you're probably going to ask yourself, well, why? Why wouldn't you want to hold it? Because, you know, the key is to hold the gun tight, right? Because we don't want it jumping around. Yes, but we want to hold it tight with our left hand. We want to keep our right hand somewhat loose. Like I said, 60%, a nice firm handshake, not a death handshake. Because if you tighten that left hand up, or that right hand up, your trigger finger also tightens up. And then I'm not able to manipulate the trigger finger as fast, as consistently, as if it's loose. So the faster I can pull the trigger, the faster I shoot, right? If I have a death grip there, I constrict that, those muscles. Now, you know, every one of you sitting out there watching, do this right now. Put your hand out there. Try to bend those number, those fingers and not do anything with that, that in the index finger, okay? It's moving, right? Okay. And then can you keep that finger smooth by itself and keep those things? See, everything's moving. You know, I mean, uh, even though I've done this a lot, I'm going to keep this finger and I can it's moving a little bit. I can't really operate that trigger finger independently of these three other, other fingers, as well as when I grip this down tight, see what happens, that already bends. I, you know, if I try to hold that straight, it, it bends a little bit right there, you know, and, uh, and if I'm really tight on it, this tightens up and I don't have as much flexibility. And if you also notice what's happening is the whole, all these fingers are moving at the same time. So what happens as you grip the gun, you put this really tight grip on it, and you're all over it, as you squeeze the trigger, the hand is moving as well. Even though it's, you don't think it, it's moving. Everything's moving a little, which in turn is putting movement into the sights, which in turn is affecting your shots downrange. So it's really important to understand that that right hand is 60, 70% max. Left hand now, let's watch what happens here. This is the magic. Okay, if you watch anything and you think about anything about this video, you remember anything, this is it right here. Left hand. See the panel right there that's left over where my fingers are? Like I said, if you've got huge hands and they're wrapping all the way around, you're coming over here, you may want to back that hand up a little bit. Okay, so you're here. Again, palm strike, boom, boom. Here's what it, it falls good on me. I've got relatively big hands. Okay, so palm goes right there in that panel of the left hand. So I want to put as much meat on that gun as possible. I want to engulf the entire frame with the left hand as well. And I want now also to engulf my right hand with my left hand. So here it is. This is the magic sauce right here. 100% with the left hand. Now, look at the grip. Not much showing there of the actual frame. I am all over that frame, and I am squeezing my right hand onto the frame with my left hand. All right, it's really, really, this is the, this is the secret sauce, I'm telling you. If you want to know anything about shooting, it's this hand right here. If you want to shoot multiple shots rapidly and on target and have tight, tight, tight double taps, it's this left hand. It's right there. It's the, you squeeze that left hand onto the right hand and you squeeze it to the point of that you can now relax your right hand a little bit. Look how much looser and more free my trigger finger is. 
because I'm not squeezing too much, I'm letting my left hand capture the right hand. So in a sense, I'm kind of holding the gun like that. That's how I got the gun, that's, that's it. And so you also notice too, look at my thumb right at the target. Okay, so come up, boom. Now, boom, there it is. So I want you to practice this left hand concept. Squeeze, and now you have a platform on which to shoot. Okay, so here we are, squeezing, controlling the gun. People always ask, what do I do with my thumbs? Where do my thumbs go? Well, let's look at my thumbs. And this is kind of, you know, I didn't make this up. I've been watching the best shooters in the world since, you know, 1983. This is what they all do. Left thumb along the frame. Right thumb on top. And notice what's happening. They're pointing towards the target. I am aiming with my thumb. Um... If you remember, you know, I mean, in you know some movies and you know the French painters go out and look at things like that. You know, ooh, you know, you've seen that before, right? And, and it's kind of the same thing. It's like, oh, oh, yeah. Let me see. So we're almost pointing with our thumbs to the target we want. There's the thumbs. People get confused with the thumbs. Now, some people with big enough hands will come down here and put the thumb on top of the grip. Nothing wrong with that, or excuse me, the um, uh, trigger guard. Like so, again, just keeping it out of the way. I've seen guys with really big hands also come across here like so. Personally, I don't like that because I would prefer to squeeze the right hand with more intensity and more muscles, and I lose that when I put my finger up here, my index finger of my left hand. So personally, that, that affects me in a negative way. I don't feel I've got a strong enough grip with my left hand to actually control the gun. I'm telling you, you go out to the range, and you actually try this, and you squeeze that left hand, let that right hand relax a little bit, and you control the gun with the left hand, you'll notice that your speeds will increase and your double taps will get closer. So we're gonna talk about that in just a little bit. All right, so there we go, we have combat grip like so, right? There's my fingers. There I am. I'm controlling the gun. And now we come up and we want to go ahead and shoot our targets. And the key to this next step is also probably a master skill that you need to understand and implement into your shooting, but you can only do it with practice and practice, practice, practice. And you can do it at home without firing a shot. It's dry fire practice. The master skill of all great shooters is to practice, 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 manipulating the gun, operating the gun, presenting the gun to the target, and squeezing the trigger, okay? And you can do that again, like I said, without firing a shot. You can become very, very proficient. In fact, I will tell you that there are some airsoft shooters who shoot in their basement, <laughs> who are amazing because they manipulate the gun, they present the gun to the target, and they squeeze the trigger, and they can do it and repeat it, repeat it, repeat it consistently with speed and accuracy. They go out to the range, they shoot, and they go, wow, geez, that's, that's easy. Well, they, they practice a bunch. So that's what the reset trigger is all about. It allows you to get the trigger time and uh, get the practice. But the key thing you're looking to do is to be able to present the sights to the target and when you snap out at that end point, the sights are pre-aligned. You get that? Okay. The sights themselves, when you draw and shoot or push the, the gun to the target and present the gun to the target at your comfortable shooting stance, okay? A lot of this comes with your stance and your, your presentation, but it you know, starts with a grip. As you present the gun and you snap out to the final spot where you're gonna be, that's my, my resting spot, okay? And you find a spot that's comfortable for you. Once you find that spot, you need to know 
that the sights are pre-aligned. So let's think about that. Pre-aligned. That means the front sight is nestled into the rear notch every time I put the gun out. So this has to be right in there every time. Front sight in the rear notch. Every time I pick the gun up, pop it out. Boom. And you know, it's amazing because it does happen for me because I've trained so much that if I grip the gun properly and I present the gun out and I double check those sights, that front post is always in the middle. So now what does that do for you? That allows you to index targets 10 yards and in all day long without really looking at the sights. So I'm looking at the target and I'm bringing the sights into my field of view and I know that they're pre-aligned so I know wherever I look, wherever my eyes go, the sights are already there. Now for longer shots, certainly I want to double check. But I would tell you that all the top shooters in the world, 10 yards and in, they're not really looking at the sights because they know that the sights are pre-aligned to their body, to their grip, to their presentation, and they've trained enough that when they come up, boop, there it is, boop, there it is, boop, there it is. Now, years ago, almost like 25, maybe even 30 years ago now, I did a video called How to Shoot Fast and Accurately. And I introduced the sweet spot theory of shooting, which is basically, there's a sweet spot out here for me and for anybody who's got their own sweet spot, okay? So there's a sweet spot out here that when I come out and I present the sight, the gun to the target, that sweet spot right up in here is where the sights are pre-aligned. And I'm fully extended. I know that the gun is online and I'm looking straight through. My eyesight is going straight through the rear sight, front sight to the target, but I'm bringing the gun right up to my target. Beep. And I know every time it's basically there. Beep. So the sweet spot theory applies even more so with this combat grip because we're looking for speed and the speed comes to how fast can you see the sights? Not how fast you can pull the trigger. How fast can your mind work so that you in fact know that the sights are lined up on the target you want to hit? Okay, that's the key. The faster your brain can work, the faster you are confident to go up and pull that trigger. When you know that you have got the sights pre-aligned based upon practice, whether you're coming from a holster, whether you're coming from a low ready, whether you're coming from a table, beep, every time you pick the gun up, there they are. You will be able to ramp your speeds up because you're not sitting there looking for the sight. Well, let me line them up. Oh yeah, okay, there, oh, there it is, there it is, and okay, bang. Now we know we come up, boom. As soon as we come up, boom. Now, combat accuracy is basically your, you know, six foot by, or six, excuse me, six inch by six inch. That, you know, we're not talking bullseye accuracy. We're not talking X-ring accuracy. We're talking combat accuracy. And speed is probably more important than accuracy in these close distances. All right? Because a shot here, or a shot here, or a shot here, or a shot here, all very effective. Especially when we're double tapping. And that's why I like my little targets. These guys are cool because um, they respond to the um, laser and they let you know you hit it. So it's one thing to dry fire at home uh, without a laser and check your sight picture. So if you don't have the laser, you can still come up, beep, put the gun out there, and yep, sights are there. Beep, sights are there. Now start to squeeze the trigger. Beep. Question there is, am I hitting the target? And how fast am I going? 
Hmm. So, you know, I mean, now this guy actually confirms and allows you to know that, yes, I hit the target and go from target to target and do all kinds of fun stuff. And again, what's really cool about this laser practice is that all the practice here applies itself to the range. So you start to speed up here. You can speed up at the range. So now the sweet spot theory, pre-aligning the sights when they come up, knowing that they're pre-aligned, all rely on a consistent grip. So now we're back to the grip. So if I grab the gun this way, without my palm on it, the way that I'm used to grabbing it, and I come up, the gun's not gonna be pre-aligned. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that's really the nature. I mean, again, it doesn't really matter how you grab the, gri the gun, as long as you can consistently present it to the target, Rapidly. So I like to use the analogy of, um, of a basketball player, because I played basketball in high school. And you know everybody at the free throw line has a unique technique. Some guys dribble it twice. They put one foot up on the line, other foot back, and pew, OK? Other guys put both feet on the line, twirl the ball, you know, I mean, all kinds of different ways. You know, some guys are off the line. Some guys shoot one-handed. I mean, just wacky, wacky stuff. You know, heck, you, you know, what was it? Uh, Rick Barry shot underhanded, you know? Or Will Chamberlain, whoever it was. So it doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you put it in the basket and you're consistent. And I agree with the same thing on the site, although I will tell you that the you know, proven technique is to get up as high as you can, you know, get a you know, firm grip here, put that left hand there, kill the, you know, the gun with the left hand, squeeze it to death, in a sense, you know, 110%, boom, own the gun with the left hand, and let that trigger finger roam free, be loose and goosey, so you can go ta -ta 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 as fast as possible. Those are the techniques that I feel are good. You can grab the gun any way you want, but will that allow you to shoot multiple shots without the gun jumping all over the place? Because that's kind of what we're talking about here. That left hand is controlling the gun, so now when I go pop, 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 the gun is jumping a little bit, but I own the gun, and it's not going that far. And keep in mind that a nine millimeter round is not that big of a deal, okay? I'm not a huge guy, you know, 185 pounds and, you know, about six foot. There are bigger guys and there are smaller guys who can control this. Anybody can control this gun with a little bit of muscles. And so it comes down to a little bit of weight forward, toes, you know, a weight on your toes, shoulders above your toes, you know, so you're in a boxer stance and you control the gun. So once you control the gun, once you know that it's not going to jump out of your hand and jump, do anything like that, that's when you start to really apply the technique of squeezing that gun coming up, looking at the target, you know it's on tight, pop, 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 pop. So that's kind of what we're looking for. And the practice that I do here with this dry fire just allows me to do so much more and it's so much cheaper than shooting live ammo. Plus I can do it anywhere. Now luckily I've got a range downstairs, but it's busy often. And so when I want to train, I will train dry fire first. Especially if I'm working concealed carry or if I'm you know, trying something new and different, I want, to, I want to do dry fire with laser first. And then we'll go to the range and actually take those skills down to the range. So, you know, the, the thing about the combat grip is it does take practice. So you want to take the time at home with an unloaded weapon. Call us if you want to get information about the uh, reset trigger. And whether you're coming from the holster, whether you're coming from the low ready, train yourself to be able to present the gun to the target and shoot. Now, if you notice, there's a little technique there that I, I want to also share with you because a lot of people want to come up like so. It's difficult to make the gun stop exactly where you want. Now, you can, but it's easier to really start from here and push the gun out. And all the competition shooters are starting with a, a holster, and so they're going to come up and come down, and they're going to come up here with this hand and push the gun out. So they're pushing the gun out and they're meeting. So it's left hand, I'm waiting for the gun, meet, and here we are, and bang, as soon as I get extended, I know I'm in my sweet spot. Once I'm in the sweet spot, anything that I'm looking at, any target that I'm looking at within 10 yards is mine. You know, I, I'm literally, I can shoot, you know, headshots, uh, eyeballs, you know, whatever you want, really. It's, it's that easy, and, and it just takes practice and repetition.
and I'm not the only guy doing it. You know, I mean, there's, you know, thousands of guys who can do this because they, you know, they train and practice. But the bottom line is, is that you want to practice uh, uh, the skill of not only the grip, but if you're coming out of a holster, come out of the holster. If you're law enforcement, come out of your duty holster. Manipulate that duty holster, come up, and then push the gun forward. And if you, you know, if you can do it where you can stop consistently here, that's fine too. You know, I don't mind either way. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter to me as long as you're consistent, as long as you can stop the gun. But what I see a lot of people doing is they come up, they bobble a, a little bit, you know. So it's, but if you can stop, boom. And then just practice. You know, once you practice what you're looking at, you can go from shot to shot, target to target, as fast as you can imagine. You'd be amazed the skill level you can uh, you can get. And again, I, I have to say, if you take anything from this video, just remember that left hand is the secret. You control the gun with the left hand so much, and I'm basically squeezing my hand onto that so that I own that gun like that. So now, it's not going anywhere. There will be a little bit of recoil muzzle rise, but not, it's not gonna fly up out of my hand. So that is the secret to shooting fast and accurately and getting the times that you want. So um, I'm Lenny McGill. This is the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop. We're in San Diego. If you're ever down in Southern California, come down and see us. Uh, we've got you know, laser, tra laser uh, trainers here. We've got uh, all the Glock parts and pieces. And of course, we've got a really cool shooting range. And I've got some great instructors who can take you in the, in the range and within an hour, get you geared up to learn how to do all this stuff we just talked about and a whole lot more. Thanks for watching. See you next time.